today's adventure starts at the magic bus stop. <laughs> Daisy and Poppy go to the museum. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's playgroup outing. Uh, Mrs. Fotheringill, are you sure it's a good idea taking the toddlers on an outing? They can be quite a handful. <laughs> <laughs> the little darlings do have high spirits. But this time, I'm not going to let them get the better of me. That's their spirit, Mrs. Fotheringill. She's doomed. Let's check all the toddlers are here. Daisy and Poppy. <laughs> uh, Daisy and Poppy have promised to be as good as gold today. Not that that means very much. I'm sure if Daisy and Poppy say they will be good, they will be. Good as gold. <laughs> Metal elf. Ouch! She stung Mrs. Fotheringill with her nettle. Raspberry fairy? <laughs> My little sister. Even her wand is rude. <laughs> oh, and last but not least, Tarquin. <laughs> Tarquin like Fotheringill? Tarquin is a monster. Remember last time when the toddlers made Mrs. Fotheringill disappear? Yes. All they found was her shoes. <laughs> Now, for today's outing, we're going on a trip to the museum. The big museum? But that's full of big people. Yes, but the museum has so many interesting things for the toddlers to look at. Are you going to take away their wands, Mrs. Fotheringill? No, Holly. If you trust a child, they will repay your trust. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a catastrophe. What's a catastrophe, Daddy? What this is going to be. Oh, look! Here comes the magic bus. All aboard! Come on, everyone. Hold tight. Go up. Next stop, the big museum. Now, as you know, there will be big people at the museum. And we don't want to be seen by big people, do we? No! So what should you do if a big person sees you? Turn them into a frog. No, no, no. If a big person sees you, just pretend to be a toy, like this. I'm a toy. I'm a toy. Last stop, big museum. Everybody off. Keep together, in we go. Wow, these stairs are big. Well, this museum is built for big people. Follow me, everyone, and try not to be seen. Ah! Whoa! Look, Mum, a tiny little person. I'm a toy! I'm a toy! It's a toy. Some poor child must have lost it. Just put it over there so they can find it again. OK, Mum. Phew! That was close! Yes, Ben, but it shows the plan works. If you're seen, just pretend to be a toy. I still think turning them into frogs is simpler. In the big museum, we can get an idea of how wonderful it was in the past. This first room is about the Stone Age. Ooh! A long time ago, the big people lived in caves. These are models of how the cave people must have looked. There's a button to press. Did the cave people have electric light bulbs? No, that's to show how the campfire would have looked when it was lit. Here's another button. <laughs> they move. Ooh. You see, King Thistle, the toddlers are being as good as gold. Good girl! <laughs> it's actually going quite well. The toddlers haven't even made Mrs. Fotheringill disappear yet. Stone Age times. Close your eyes and imagine what it must have been like. <laughs> I have always wanted to know what it would be like to live in the Stone Age. <laughs> oh dear, I suppose it was never going to last. All they've left is her shoes. Daisy, Poppy, where have you sent Mrs. Fotheringill? Stone, Stone Age! Age. <gasps> they've sent Mrs. Fotheringill back to the Stone Age. That was a very naughty thing to do. Bring Mrs. Fotheringill back right now. <sighs> okay. Oh, 
On second thoughts, you don't want to know what it was like to live in the Stone Age. Oh, my shoes! It's good to have them back. Right. Next room, Ancient Egypt. Ooh. Look, here's a model showing how a pyramid was built. It's quite small. Were the ancient Egyptians the size of elves and fairies? No, the ancient Egyptians were big people. And the pyramids are huge. But they wouldn't be able to fit a full-sized pyramid into the museum. Big. That's right, Daisy. Think how big a real pyramid would be. Here we go again. Use your imagination. Big. Ah, oh, no, stop, stop it. My turn. What's going on here? Big people are coming. What's in there? Everyone, pretend to be toys. And what are these little toys doing here? Hello. Uh, hello? Frog time. <laughs> well done, Tarquin. Like they always say, when things are not going quite right, turn them into a frog. That doesn't even rhyme. And turning people into frogs is not a good way to do things. Why not? He'll turn back to a person in a moment and he won't remember a thing. We'd better get out of here before he turns back again. Yes, on with the tour. Oh, my goodness, that was all a bit of an adventure. What we need now is something a little less dangerous. Next room, the Vikings. Less dangerous? Vikings? People think the Vikings just ran around shouting. But really, they were gentle people who farmed and played music. If only there were Vikings around today, I'd love to know what they'd say to us. <laughs> she never learns. Abracadabra! <laughs> Interesting fact about Vikings, all they ate was Spam. I don't think that is correct. It's true! Vikings ate Spam. It was on the telly. Uh, Nanny, what happens when the frogs turn back into Vikings? They'll be very confused and maybe a tiny bit annoyed. Right, let's make sure we're not around when that happens. Wow, look at all those frogs. And what's this? Sorry about this, but I'm going to have to turn you all into frogs. Just for a bit. Eh? Frog time! <laughs> Nanny, why are there still bangs going on in the other rooms? Well, it was going to happen at some point anyway, so I thought I'd save a bit of time and just turn the whole lot of them into frogs. All the big people in the museum? You've turned them all into frogs? That's right. I knew you'd be pleased. Oh, what happened? Where am I? It's the museum man. He's turned back to himself again. Yes, and he's confused and a little bit annoyed. Ah! Oh, no! Ah! All the Vikings are turning back too. Right. I think this is as good a time as any to leave. Let's get out of here. Children, back on the bus. Next stop, the Little Kingdom. Last stop. Everybody off. Oh. Well, all in all, that didn't go too badly. We survived and the museum wasn't destroyed. <laughs> Good girl. You see? All you have to do is trust the little darlings and they will repay your trust. She's really in a world of her own. She never learns. And next time, I thought we could visit a... Next time? Yes, we'll visit a big castle. You know, I've always wanted to live in the times of knights in armour. Abracadabra! Yeah! <laughs> <sighs> Let's bring her back. Abracadabra. On second thoughts, I never want to live in the time of knights in armour. 
think the safest, nicest time is right here and now. <laughs> Today's adventure starts at the lake. The Elf Submarine. Your Majesty, may I present the Elf Factory's latest toy, the Elf Submarine. Ah, yes. Jolly good. Does it float? Does it float? Of course it floats. Allow us to demonstrate. We carefully chose this day to test the submarine, as there are no other boats on the lake. Hello, me hearties! It's Redbeard, the elf pirate! Yo ho ho! Land ahoy! Um, should the ship be leaning like that? Maybe it's the weight of all that treasure. She's sinking! Abandon ship! Abandon ship! <laughs> Curses! Me ship and me treasure gone down to the bottom of the sea. How sad. Anyway, as I was saying, this is a perfect day to test the submarine with no boats on the lake. But what about Mr. Redbeard's treasure? Yes, me treasure. How will I get it back? If only we had some way of sailing underwater to look for it. Ah, if only. Anyway, back to my submarine. There's The a... submarine! We can use the submarine! Clever Ben! Hang on! The elf submarine is a toy! It's not for going on adventures. Oh, so it can't go underwater? Yes, it can. It'll probably sink like a stone. No, it will not. Good. That's that sorted. Captain Redbeard, our submarine is at your service. Thank you, Your Majesty. But... But I'll be needing a crew. Aye, aye, Captain Redbeard. Can I come? And me. I'd better come too. If there's any trouble, I can use magic to help us. No, Nanny Palum. There will be no magic on the elf submarine. Because we're elves. And elves don't do magic. Yes, we know. He's in the Polly, my faithful friend, you'll have to wait here. Ah! Mr. Elf, steer the submarine. Aye, aye. Ben and Holly, wind up the engine. Aye, aye, aye Captain. What shall I do? Why, you just sit there and look pretty, my little mermaid. Oof. I know this lake. I've sailed on it often. Are you a sailor? I was a sailor. I'm not anymore. Why not? Big Bad Barry. Who's Big Bad Barry? Only the biggest, giganticest, most enormous fish the world has ever seen. He's eaten nine of Dad's boats. You lost nine boats? I thought I was a bad sailor. I'm not a bad sailor. Just unlucky. That big bad Barry is quite big. And bad. Dive, if you please, Mr. Elf. Dive, dive, dive. Oh, it's so pretty. Look. Where? What is it? It's Redbeard's boat. Fine, Neptune, you're right. Well spotted, Ben! Oh, for a moment, I thought you'd seen Big Bad Barry. Ho ho! Now I can get me treasure back! Let's get it and go. I don't like it down here. I love it. All the fish and the flowers and that big underwater cloud. You don't get underwater clouds, me hearty. Shiver me timbers! It's a fish! It's so big! It looks bad. Is it Barry? It is. It's Big Bad Barry. He's swimming towards Redbeard's boat. Oh, dear. He's going to eat it. No! Me treasure! Did you see that? He swallowed it whole like it were a grape. 
Oh, what a shame. Shall we go home then? Go home? But we haven't got me treasure! Well, we can't do much about that now. I never thought I'd say it, but Nanny Plum is right. Unless you want to sail into Barry's stomach and take your treasure back, this adventure is over. You're right, me fruity pancake. Mm. Take us home, Mr. Ralph. Aye, aye, Captain Redbeard. Uh, who turned out the lights? It's all gone dark. Where are we? Oh, we must have sailed into a cave. Mr. Elf was chatting instead of looking where he was going. I was parked. Well, we're somewhere strange, and no mistake. And I'll shave me beard off if there's not something fishy going on. Turn on the lights, Mr. Elf. Aye, aye, Captain. It smells fishy. What a pong. Where are we? Look, me ship. There are more boats as well. <gasps> it's Bunty. The boat Big Bad Barry ate last winter. That's my old boat, Trixabel. And there's Fifi. And this Boo Boo. Uh, if all those boats are inside Big Bad Barry, then we must be inside Big Bad Barry. By all that's wet and fishy, you're right. We're in the belly of the big fish. That explains the smell. Just think, all those years I tried to catch Barry, and now he's caught me. How are we going to get out of here? If we could get Big Bad Barry to open his mouth, we could just sail out. Oh, very clever, Ben. Only, how do we get him to open his mouth? Hmm, maybe it's time to ask for a bit of advice. Can someone answer their phone? It's not my phone. It's not mine either. Oh, it's mine. Hello? Oh, hello, Nanny Plum. What's that? They've got good news and bad news. What's the good news? They've found the treasure. Hooray! And what's the bad news? They've been swallowed by a giant fish. What? Are they OK? Uh, I'll ask. Is my submarine all right? It's not scratched, is it? Listen, Clever Clogs. We need your help. How can we get Big Bad Barry to open his mouth? Someone needs to talk to the fish. Nanny Plum can speak fish. Ah, Nanny Plum, you must tell the fish a joke and make him laugh. That's an idea. A very stupid idea, but an idea. What's the plan? I'm going to tell Big Bad Barry a joke to make him laugh. What utter nonsense! It was the wise old elf's idea. It's brilliant. Everyone back in the sub, get ready to sail! Hmm, what's a good fish joke? I know. <coughs> Did it work? I don't know. He might not get it. <laughs> Something's happening. I think he likes the joke. <laughs> Full steam ahead! Aye, aye, Captain. The elf pirate Redbeard and his crew return. It's a triumph! Hooray! Hooray! So you got the treasure? Nope. You got your boat? Nope. So in what way is this trip a triumph, then? Well, we're not inside a big fish. In that case, congratulations! It's a shame the treasure's lost. It's not lost. I know where it is, and no one will ever find it in the belly of Big Bad Barry. That's true. Of course it is, me tasty little fruit tree. Oh. Nanny Plum, what was the joke you told Big Bad Barry? It was, where do fish keep their money? We don't know. Where do fish keep their money? In a river bank. Ugh, <sighs> that's not very funny. I know. It's a bit of a rubbish joke. But then fish find the silliest things funny. 
They have very small brains. Where do fish keep their money? Oh, I get it. A riverbank. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Today's adventure starts at the fairy village. Father's Day. <sniffs> Happy Father's Day, Papa. I made you breakfast. Oh, thank you, Strawberry. Look at your card. To the nicest Papa in the world. How sweet. And no work for you today. You get the day off. That sounds good. But what shall I do? You can play. Who will I play with? The other daddies, of course. It's Father's Day for every daddy. Morning, Dad. Breakfast. Oh, what a lovely card, Ben. It's a picture of me waving from the elf truck. <gasps> the truck! I've got to make my food deliveries. No, Mr Elf. You've got the day off. But, but... Don't worry. Someone else is doing your deliveries. Oh, really? Who? Food delivery! Come and get it! What? Nanny Plum? Hello, Mr Elf. I'm in charge of your deliveries today. So you just sit back and relax. Sit back and relax with Nanny doing my deliveries. Where's the break? Oops! Oh, dear. Morning time. Hey, what? Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Ah, breakfast in bed. If only every day could start like this. But every day does start like this. You always have breakfast in bed. Ah, yes. Read your card, Daddy. You're the best daddy in the universe. <laughs> and today you can do what you like. Yes, you're not the king today. You're just my daddy. Marvellous. Now, make sure Mrs Fig's egg is nice and fresh. And don't forget the orange for Mrs Peach. Right, a peach for Mrs Orange. No, an orange for Mrs Peach. Yes, yes, whatever. Hey, hey, you forgot the egg. Hello there. It's the king. Hooray! Ho -ho, I'm not the king today. I'm just a humble daddy, like you lot. And today, all the daddies have to play. Yes, here's a ball. Ho -ho! To you, Dad. To you, Your Majesty. To you. Oops. Yeah! It's Redbeard the Elf Pirate. Which scurvy scoundrel be shooting cannonballs at me now? Uh, that would be me. Oh, begging your pardon, King Thistle. That's quite all right. I'm just a normal daddy today. All the daddies have the day off. Because it's Father's Day. Ah, I know. And that's why I brought this here card. Hello, Nigel. Hello, Fred. Seen Dad today. Hello. I've come to join in the fun. I'm sorry, wise old elf, but you have to be a daddy to have the day off. Actually, Holly, I am a daddy. I have three sons. Three sons? Yes, but I don't talk about it much. It's a bit uh, embarrassing. My eldest boy ran off to sea to make his fortune. He has a big red beard and he's a, a pirate. Happy Father's Day, Dad! Thank you, son. And from me too, Dad. Thank you. Redbeard, you never said the wise old elf was your dad. Well, pirates don't like to admit they have mummies and daddies. True, but they all do. And that's a fact. Captain Squid! Aha! What are you doing here, you scurvy old rogue? I'm keeping an eye on you, you blackguard, so you don't steal my treasure. Scallywag! Scoundrel! Ha-ha! Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thank you, son. What? Captain Squid is your son, too? That's, that's right! right. Oh, two of my son's pirates. But at least I have one son who's sensible. Guess what, Dad? I have decided to be a Viking. Ha-ha! Oh. <laughs> Food delivery! Oh, good. I ordered an egg. I've got an egg, but I've got an orange. Have you brought my 
orange. Sorry, Mrs Peach. Just out of oranges. Here's some broccoli instead. I don't like broccoli. Oh, but it's good for you. This is a lettuce. But I ordered a cabbage. Oh, for goodness sake. You're all so grumpy. We're only grumpy because you muddled our delivery. It's not like when Mr Elf does it. Oh, here. You can help yourselves. <laughs> Food delivery. Bye. <laughs> to you, Ben. To you, Dad. Let's see how high I can kick the ball. <laughs> ben? Hello, Mum. Did you kick this ball? Um... No, it was, uh, me. Oh, dear. This Father's Day game has got a bit silly, hasn't it? It's not as bad as last Mother's Day. Yes, you mummies know how to party. <laughs> Do you know what time it is? Yes, it's Mother's Day. <laughs> yes, maybe we did go a bit wild. Come on, daddies. Let's play in the meadow. Hooray! Let's play basketball. We'll need two nets. We'll need a referee. dum de dum de dee de doo Nanny, we need a referee for our game. OK, what's the game? Basketball. Never heard of it. One team has to throw the ball into this net and the other team has to throw the ball into that net. And you can only... OK, OK, I don't need to know all the little details. Let's start. But I haven't finished telling you the rules. Yes, yes. Go on, Ben. Throw it in the net. Goal! Nanny, in basketball, you don't say goal. You say... Yes, yes. I'm awarding you five points. But that's too many. I decide the rules. I'm the referee. Carry on. Remember, Daddy, you mustn't kick the ball. Oh, I see. I'll use magic then. Aha! <laughs> Goal! You can't use magic. It's Father's Day. What has magic got to do with Father's Day? Yellow card for being naughty. But I'm the king. Red card for talking back. Play on. <laughs> to that team. No, no, that's too many points. Oh, this will take forever. Let's make it easier. What's the ball had legs? <laughs> then it could score on its own. Hooray! This is too easy. <laughs> OK, I'll make it harder. I'll give the next legs too. Oh, this is ridiculous. Why don't you add some dragons for good measure? Oh, that's a good idea, wise old elf. Dragons! <laughs> ah, so this is basketball. What a fun game. Well done, wise old elf, for suggesting it. But, but, but... Game over. What's the score, Nanny? What score would you like? Can we have... A hundred million. OK. A hundred million points to this team. Hooray! We have a hundred million too. Yes. A hundred million points to that Hooray! team. Oh, that means it's a draw. Hooray! Oh, what a great Father's Day this has been. It'll be hard getting back to my work tomorrow. Yes, it'll be hard getting back to my food deliveries again. Oh, the deliveries. Uh, I'm afraid it all went a bit wrong today. Mrs Peach wanted an orange and Nanny gave her broccoli. And I think I gave Mr Egg a peach. Or was it the other way round? It'll take weeks to sort this out. I'm quite looking forward to it. I really enjoyed Father's Day. It's a shame it's over. There's still a tiny bit of Father's Day left, Papa. I'll read you a bedtime story. <laughs> Thank you, Strawberry. Ready? Once upon a time... A big bad wolf came along to the straw house and he huffed and he puffed and then there was a loud knock on the door. Who could that be? said the princess. With a yo-ho-ho, -ho, the pirates set sail across the deep blue sea. Does the story have to be about pirates? Not about 
pirates. What else could the story be about? How about Vikings? Oh, OK. Vikings, then. The Vikings set sail across the deep blue sea. And on the way, they met a pirate! yo -ho -ho! <laughs> It's not bad being a father. Not bad at all. Today's adventure starts at the little castle. Visiting the Marigolds. <laughs> Hi, Ollie. Do you want to come and play? I'd like to play, Ben, but I can't. We're going to visit King and Queen Marigold. They're a bit snooty. I'm glad I'm not going. I wish I wasn't going. Maybe your mum will let you stay and play with me. Mummy, can I play with Ben today? What a good idea. Hooray! Ben can come too. Oh. That's all right, isn't it, Mr Elf? Oh, yes. Go off and enjoy yourself, Ben. See you later. Bye. Oh, you're coming too, are you? OK. Magic car, drive on. This is fun. A magic car. Yes, it uses fairy dust to make it go. Cool. I want you all on your best behaviour today. Yes, Queen Thistle. King and Queen Marigold's home will be full of very precious things. Horrible, but precious. So you mustn't touch anything. Visiting King and Queen Marigold sounds like hard work. It'll be exhausting. Here we are. King and Queen Marigold's castle. Oh, what a horrible building. Such bad taste. It's beautiful. Cool castle. Hello and welcome. Holly, you remember King and Queen Marigold? Hello, Hello Princess, Princess Holly. Holly. Hello, and this is my best friend Ben. You've met him before. Of course. The charming little goblin. I not a goblin. I'm an elf. Oh, an elf? How exotic. Did you have a pleasant journey? It must be so nice to leave your little kingdom behind for a day. Tell us honestly, what do you think of our castle? Honestly, it looks like a complete... It's very nice. I wish we had a castle like this, Mummy. Oh, before we had it rebuilt in plastic, it was made of stone. Imagine, how primitive. Our castle is made of stone. Ah, but you live in an old-fashioned castle. Mm, it must be very uncomfortable. Not really. Oh, oh, you've brought your ladybird. Ugh. Down, Gaston, down. Oh, that means he likes you. Charmed, I'm sure. Let's go inside. We'll give you the tour. Can Gaston come too? As long as he wipes his feet. Yes, if you could all wipe your feet. And please don't touch anything. And if you could, try not to breathe too heavily. We've got lots of precious things. As you can see, we've turned the idea of the hallway on its head. Ridiculous. Wow! It's all upside down. Amazing. Oh, where's Gaston gone? There's Gaston. He's walking on the ceiling. No, Daddy. Gaston's walking on the upside down floor. Clever Gaston. Hmm, yes, and I see he didn't wipe his feet. <laughs> Nanny, clean it up. I'm not your servant. That's right, Nanny. You're my servant. Thank you, Your Majesty. So clean it up, Nanny. Uh, yes, Your Majesty. Muddy footprints, away you go. Good. Now, 
Where were we? There are 100 rooms in our castle. What do you do with all those rooms? We fill them, my boy, with things. This is our collection of pebbles. Pebbles? Oh, there is nothing quite as wonderful as a well-polished pebble. Oh, indeed. What do they do? They're beautiful. Please don't touch them. We don't want them to get sticky. Children always have sticky hands. No, we don't. Yes, you do. Do you think the pebbles look beautiful, King Thistle? What? Oh, yes. Very, uh, pebbly. This way. Ugh! Green fly. Mm. Good boy, Gaston. You won't be needing dinner now. Oh, I see you found our pet green fly. Lucinda, Gucci, and Timmy. Oh, but where is Timmy? Ah. Timmy! 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 Hmm, perhaps he's gone for a walk. Timmy! Gaston, spit Timmy out. <laughs> Ah, Timmy. <laughs> ah, oh, 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 playing hide-and-seek, were we? <laughs> now you may find the next room a little chilly. <laughs> it's freezing in here. Yes, this room must be kept well below freezing temperature at all times. All these lovely things are made of ice. They look very beautiful, Queen Marigold. Yes, they're, uh, cool. Please don't touch. Are they made with magic? Oh, no. That would be too easy. They're made from ice that froze over a thousand years ago. Ooh. And hand-carved by Norwegian mining pixies. These sculptures are one of a kind and simply irreplaceable. Ooh, a swan, that's nice. I like swans. Oh, dear. Nanny, what have you done? You've broken the swan's head off. It's all right. I'll magic another one. Abracadabra, make me a bird. Ice thingy. Nanny, that's not a swan. It looks like a hen. Or a duck, maybe. It looks lovely. I like ducks. This way, do keep up. This is our finest and most treasured collection of all antique toys. Amazing. You must play in here all the time. I could play here forever. This monkey is over a hundred years old. And this clown is over 200 years old. <laughs> Apparently, they were made at the Elf Factory by someone called the Wise Old Elf. We know the Wise Old Elf. <gasps> you know the Wise Old Elf? What's he like? He's wise. He's old. He's... He's a grumpy old elf that's a bit clever. This is my favourite toy. A clockwork fairground ride. But sadly, it's broken. Don't worry, I can mend it. I don't think so. It needs to be seen by an expert. Elves are experts, and I'm an elf. <laughs> <laughs> and I can help you, Ben. Rawr! Don't touch! These toys must not be touched by children. We'll have to touch it to mend it. Um, okay. There! It's mended! Vroom, vroom, beep, beep. Whee! <laughs> this is fun! <laughs> oh, it stopped. I wanted to go again. Oh, yes, 
again, again, again. More, more, more. Okay. King and Queen Marigold's castle isn't boring at all. Yes, actually, it's quite fun, isn't it? Choo -choo. <laughs> <laughs> Today's adventure starts at Gaston's cave. <laughs> Gaston's birthday. <laughs> Come on, Gaston, wiggle your legs. <laughs> <laughs> Gaston loves wiggling his legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, has Gaston got one new spot today? I'm not sure. Do ladybirds get new spots? Ladybird gets a new spot for every birthday. Wow, Gaston's got lots of spots, so he must have had lots of birthdays. <laughs> and lots of birthday parties. <laughs> oh, have you never had a birthday party, Gaston? <laughs> That's really sad. Daddy, Mummy, it's not fair. Gaston's never had a birthday party. Well, I wish I'd never had a birthday party. Oh, darling, it's your birthday tomorrow and you'll enjoy it. No, I won't. This year I don't want a party. Oh, Daddy, you say that every year. Well, this year I mean it. I don't like my parties with the elf band singing about me getting older. You're lucky you're getting a party, Daddy. Gaston's never even had one. <sighs> then give my party to Gaston. I'm going to have a bath. Oh, same every year. So grumpy about his birthday, but he always enjoys it in the end. Come on, let's go and see how the elf band are getting on. Hello, wise old elf. We've come to hear the song you're doing for Daddy's birthday. Ah, yes. We've come up with a good one this year. I think King Thistle will be very pleased. King Thistle is old, 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 and today he's even older. King Thistle is old, 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 old. Very sweet. And I, Redbeard the Elf Pirate, will fire myself out of this cannon in the King's honour. But the King's birthday isn't until tomorrow. This is a dry run to see if it works. Light the fuse! Lighting the fuse. Whee! Hurrah! Where do you think he'll land? Who knows? Ah. Oh. I do like a nice, relaxing bath. It's good to get away from all that talk about birthdays. Happy birthday, Your Majesty! Ah! Get out of my bath! It's not my birthday! I know! This is a dry run! Now, see here! I don't want any birthday stuff! Ah, that's what you say every year! Look! I don't want a cake, I don't want a song, and I don't want a pirate in my bath! So, you really don't want a party? No! I don't want a party! Not this year, not next year, not any year! Never! No! Party! And that's when he started shouting. He was a tiny bit angry. So he really doesn't want a party? No. Oh, dear. What will we do with the presents we wrapped? And the cakes I baked. And our new song. And me cannon. We've got a whole birthday party ready and no one to give it to. Um, Daddy did say Gaston could have his party. <laughs> Poor Gaston has never had a birthday party. Would you like a birthday party, Gaston? Then it's decided it will be Gaston's birthday party. <laughs> Hooray! Hooray!
will need a new song for Gaston from the Elf Band. Yes, Your Majesty. And I'll bake Gaston some cakes. And I'll fire myself out of me cannon in Gaston's honour. He'll appreciate it. Not like somebody whose name I won't mention. The king, I mean. <laughs> this will be the best party ever. What do you think Gaston would like for his birthday present? A squeaky toy. Very good. <coughs> now to wrap it. Spotty wrapping paper. Brilliant. Hello. I've finished my bath. Uh-oh. What are you doing? Relax, darling. It's nothing to do with you. A likely story. It really isn't, so stop fussing. Uh, fine. Mmm. Can I smell cakes? I thought so. What's going on, Nanny? Are you baking cakes? Yes, I am. These cakes had better not be for me. <laughs> They're not. Now, Shoe, go on. I haven't got time to talk to you. I suppose it is nice that they want to give me a party so much. <laughs> What shall we do for Gaston's birthday card? Let's draw a picture of Gaston. Good idea. Hello, Holly. Hello, Daddy. We're making a birthday card. I don't suppose it's for me, is it? No. No, of course not. Ha! I don't think my face is that red. And I don't have black spots. I told you, Daddy. It's not for you. <laughs> oh, yes. So you did. Ben! Hello, Dad! Do you want to help deliver the party invitations? Yes, please! Off we go! Oh, they're delivering invitations for my party! How sweet! Special delivery! Invitations to Gaston's birthday! Gaston's party is tomorrow at the Frog Pond! Are you all coming? Yes! yes. Of course we are! Where next? We mustn't forget Gaston! It is his party! <laughs> there you go, Gaston! An invitation to your very own birthday! <laughs> <laughs> Gaston loves eating letters. So, are you coming to your party, Gaston? Uh. I think that means yes. Ah, oh, how are the preparations going for my party tomorrow? Your party? You're not having a party. Ho <laughs> ho, I know your little plan. What little plan? You told us not to plan anything. Ha <laughs> ha, that's right. I did. Good night then. Good night. <sighs> oh, no one here. I expect they're all downstairs. <laughs> no birthday cards? Where is everybody? Of course, they're all secretly hiding outside, ready to shout, Happy Birthday, King Thistle! Oh, there's no one here. They must be having the party somewhere else. Ah, that sounds like a party. I'd better go and find out where it is. Not much of a party without me, the birthday boy. Everyone is here, even Gaston's brother Tony with Pam and the little ladybird Amber, <laughs> Emerald <laughs> and Keith. <laughs> Happy birthday, Gaston. Here's your present. <laughs> it's a squeaky toy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? I'm sorry, do you have an invitation? I don't need one. I'm King Thistle. King Thistle, King Thistle. No, your name's not on here. What? But it's my party. No, it's not, mate. It's Gaston the Ladybird's party. What? Take it easy, fella. It's supposed to be a happy occasion. It's all right. He's with us. What's going on? Where's my birthday party? You said you didn't want a party. I know I said that, but what I really meant was I do want a party. Oh, Daddy. You are silly. Yes, I know. Oh, well, I'm sure Gaston won't mind sharing his party with you. 
Gaston, be nice and share your present with King Thistle. <laughs> Gaston, that's not how to behave on your birthday. <laughs> For me? How kind. It's a squeaky toy. Yes, for you to chase. And now it's time for the birthday song. He's round and he's red with big black spots. How dare they? It's about Gaston, Daddy. He rolls on his back and he barks a lot. He's Gaston the ladybird. That was really fun. Maybe birthday parties aren't that bad. What's that noise? Happy birthday! Ah! Hooray! Hooray! Happy birthday, Daddy. Oh, oh, thank you, Holly. Today's adventure starts at the little castle. The party! Come on, everyone. We've got to get ready for the party. Party? Daisy and Poppy's birthday party. <gasps> oh, no! Party, party! Two magical toddlers are bad enough. But when all their little friends turn up, it's terrible. <laughs> I've got it. We'll have the party, but we won't invite any guests. Da 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 da! I've sent out all the party invites, and everybody's coming. Oh, who's coming? There's little Tarquin. Tarquin like party. Oh no, Tarquin is a monster. And there's Raspberry. Not my little sister. Even her wand is rude. <laughs> And Nettle Elf. My little sister. She's got a stinging nettle in her hat. And it stings when you touch it. Nettle Elf is the naughtiest of the lot. What do you expect? She's got a pirate for an uncle. Yes. Redbeard the Elf Pirate. <sighs> this party is going to be a disaster. Don't worry. I've got it all planned. We'll have magic games, followed by my magic show, and ending with magic jelly. Magicy, magicy. <laughs> I was wrong. The party's not going to be a disaster. It's going to be a catastrophe. Thank you, Your Majesty. I know, King Thistle. You could have an elf party. A what? An elf party has no magic at all. But what about my magic show? The toddlers love a magic show. We have the great Wizardo, an elf conjurer. He doesn't do real magic. It's just tricks. I like it, Ben. It sounds very safe. Yeah, and boring. Exactly. Nanny Plum, call this great Wizardo and tell him we've got children we want to bore. I mean, entertain. Ugh. Very well, Your Majesty. <laughs> Welcome to the party. Tarquin like party. Bye bye, Tarquin. Be good. Yes, Mama. <sniffs> oh. Hello, Nettle. Ow! That stings. Nanny Plum! Me fruity pancake. Ugh. Enjoy the party, Nettle. I'll be back to pick you up later. <laughs> oh, settle down, children, please. <laughs> the great Wizardo. That's just the wise old elf. I'm not just the wise old elf. I'm also a children's entertainer. Oh, Carry on, then. These children are a bit of a handful, especially when they do magic. There won't be any magic at this party. I'll put the toddler's wands into the library, where they can't cause any trouble. Very clever. Let's get this party started. Hooray! Musical statues. When the music stops, you have to stand as still as a statue. Aha! Raspberry, I saw you move. And you, Nettle. That's because they haven't been turned to stone yet. Ah! Strawberry, you've magicked them into real statues. Of course. That's 
how we fairies play musical statues. This is not a fairy party. Turn them back to normal. OK. The big children's ones are going into the library with the others. Now it's time to play Stick the Tail on the Donkey. Here's the donkey. Looks like a cabbage. Or a duck. It's a donkey. Now, I will blindfold Nettle Elf and she'll try to stick this tail on the donkey. <laughs> Ow! She stung me again! It's a stupid game anyway. You need a big dragon to stick the tail on. Ah! Oh, looks like the twins' party has started. Get rid of the dragon! All right. Just trying to liven the party up a bit. I'm putting the grown-ups' ones in the library too. Now for my conjuring show. Hooray! Queen Thistle, please take a card. <laughs> Don't show me. What is your card? Um, the two of hearts. Your card is the two of hearts. That's the worst trick I've ever seen. I thought it was rather good. How's it done? For my next trick, I will turn myself into a mouse. Ooh. You little ones need to wait behind this door for a moment. How do you change yourself into a mouse? I put these ears on and this nose, then I... Uh was it a good idea putting the toddlers in the library? What? It's the same room you put all the wands in. Ah. <laughs> Don't worry, the great wizardo will sort this out. I'll show them my mouse trick. That will surprise them. They'll be surprised how bad it is. So it might work. Look, children, I've turned myself into a... Mousey, mousey! Wow, that's not a bad costume. Uh, the toddlers have magic the wise old elf into a real mouse. Squeak! Can someone please magic me back into an elf? No, we can't do any magic because somebody put all the wands in the library. Ah, uh, yes. Squeak! Ahoy, me hearties! I'm here to pick up my niece, Meryl. Oh, <laughs> Actually, the party's not quite over yet. <laughs> no? The toddlers are in the library with the dangerous spell books. They've got all the magic wands. And they've magic the wise old elf into a mouse. Squeak! Sounds like a fun party. Oh, no. It's gone quiet. They're up to something. Let's take a look. Hello? Hello? There's no one here. Just our wands. Oh, it's good to have you back again. Uh, Nanny, now you have your wand again, would you mind, um... Of course, oh great wizardo. Silly old elf, back to yourself. Oh, so where be the poor little toddlers? I was afraid of this. Daisy and Poppy have found the secret passageway. Ooh. Where does the secret passageway go? To the secret room. I I never knew we had a secret room. That's because it's secret. The room contains a magical force that must never be let out. So, not a good room for toddlers to be in, then. <laughs> I hear the sound of excited little ones and something else. We must not enter. Honestly, what a lot of fuss about a terrible magical force of unimaginable power. I'll handle this. Good luck, me brave little pumpkin. Go off! <laughs> what can you see? Terrible things! Redbeard to the rescue! <laughs> Here be the toddlers. Help! Hang on! Nanny Pum! Here she be! You're safe now, my plum pudding. I've seen many a terrible thing at sea, but nothing, nothing as bad as what I saw in that room. 
That's why we tend to keep the door locked. <laughs> Good. The party's over. It all went rather well, I thought. But what about the jelly? We haven't had magic jelly yet. Magic jelly! Magic jelly! All right, Nanny. But please don't make too much this time. <laughs> Look! Magic jelly! That's good. The party must be almost over. Ah, <laughs> oh, Raspberry. Have you had a nice time? Yes, Mummy. Tarquin, say thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Goodbye, Nettle. Ow! She stung me again. It's Raspberry's birthday next. We hear you've got a children's entertainer who's good with toddlers. Yes. Here he is. The great... Wizardo! Um, I... Uh... Wonderful. See you all at Raspberry's party, then. <laughs> party, party! 